Amen. Let the church say amen. Come on, stand on your feet and give God a great big hand praise from the choir to the back door. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it as we all stand, if you can, as we all stand to the attention of God. If God's been good to you, you want to thank him and let him know you're ready to worship him in spirit and in truth. As you bow your heads in a, in a, in a, a humble fashion, even now. Whatever you need, God is able to do, it, to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. God not only does good things, but he does great things. God doesn't only do normal and natural things. He does miraculous things. And if you want a miracle from God, all you have to do is ask him. And I guarantee you, if it's within his will, what you're asking, the Bible says he will give it unto you and to me. As you bow your heads, why don't you pray for the worship experience? There's some people who have come in here today because they've been struggling with some issues all week long. They've been dealing with some problems in their life. They have had concerns that have kept them up all night long at times. And so now they've come in here to worship God and to experience God. We want to engage you today. Engage you. We don't want to entertain you. This choir is not here to entertain you. I'm not here to entertain you. I want to engage you. Say engage. And the only way I can engage you is that you have to participate. Say participate. So if you come here as a spectator, just to look and see what's going on and who made it to church or who ain't made it to church, if you will. And I can say ain't. If you come here for that, then I guarantee you, you're not going to have worship today. You're going to walk out saying, what happened today? But somebody else is going to walk out and say, the Almighty God visited us in a very great way this morning. And we hear church. Why? Because they anticipated the presence of God, the Holy Spirit to come down in the church. And they prayed in advance that God's presence will be felt on the altar of the hearts of the people. If you want somebody to get saved, don't depend just on me or the choir, but rather depend upon your prayer for the lost. God knows we don't want anyone to enter into this place called hell. We would, as God said, that everybody would have everlasting life and enter into the joy of their salvation in the places called heaven. And so if you're here right now and you know Jesus, I want you to appeal to Jesus right now that he will appeal to somebody in this place. It might be a young person. It might be a teenager. It might be an old person. It might be a married person. It might be a single parent person. But I want you to ask Jesus to intervene in this place. Oh God, right now we thank you for allowing us to wor worship you in spirit and in truth. Not only did you give us a time, but you gave us a place called the Mount Zion Church. And we're grateful that we're here today. We're not worried about the snow. We're not concerned about the cold. But rather, we are concerned that we enter into your presence today in a powerful kind of a way. Even for those who are on the airway, may they feel the presence of you in the, wherever they are at, wherever they're sitting, wherever they're eating, whatever they're doing right now. I pray that your presence will extend into their place. And even for those who still remain in their car, we pray, oh God, that you will bless them, heal them, and guide them. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God shouted, amen. Give God a great big hand. Praise as the choir comes and shares with us today. Oh, yes. Come on, sing King with them. King of kings. King of kings. Lord of Lord, yeah. King of kings, you are. Lord of Lord, you are. King of kings, you are. Prostrate, fall and crown him Lord of all, ruler and high king, master of everything. Join with the angels and we'll crown him king of kings. King of kings, you are. Yeah. Lord of lords, you are. Yeah. King of kings, you are. Lord of lords, you are. King of kings, you are. Oh. Lord of lords, you are. King of kings, you are. Lord of lords, you are. Fall and crown him Lord of all, ruler and high king, master of everything. Join with the angels and we'll crown him king of kings. King of kings you are, yeah. Lord of lords you are, yeah. king of kings you are, oh. Lord of lords you are, king of kings yeah. you are, Lord of lords you are, king of kings you are, Lord of lords you are, king of kings you are, king of kings, Lord of lords.
How many of you believe that we serve a great big God? You believe we serve a great big God. Can you give him a great big praise? Do you believe God loves you? Then can you give him a great big praise? Do you believe that God woke you up this morning? Can you give him a great big praise? Do you believe God kept you in your right mind last week with all those who give him a great big praise? Do you believe that God is empowering your relationship? You Give right him now. a great big praise. We he serve a great big God. Amen. Amen. Just wave at your neighbor next to you and just tell your neighbor. Just, now just whisper, just whisper to them. Say, I serve a great big God. And hit your hit your hands back to your back. Say, I, I, I serve. Hit your hands back to yourself and say, I serve a great big God. Come on now and say, I serve a great big God. Some of y'all ain't doing it. Y'all just looking like this. And, and you know, when you look like that, you get nothing. Have I got a witness? When I tell my kids to do something for me, if they just look at me and say, they don't get no candy, don't, don't get no ice cream, don't get no soda, don't get no dinner, don't get nothing from me. Go to bed. Yeah. Have I got a witness in the house? F, can you give me F? Uh, I stopped by to tell you. The Lord is able. Yeah. I stop by to tell you. Yeah. Give me an F now. Oh, yeah. God is good. God is good. God is good. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? Yeah. When he wakes you up in the morning, yeah. the Lord is still good. Yeah. When he starts you on your way, yeah. the Lord is still good when my enemies turn on me won't the Lord make your enemies your footstool when the doctor said no 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 God angels come into the room have I got a witness All right, y'all thought I still couldn't do that, but I just want to tell you, I can still do my number. Turn to your neighbor and say, Pastor can still preach when he wants to. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God, even now, as you bow your heads, thanking God. The Bible says that we're commanded to love God in a certain way and to worship him in three ways. He said, worship the Lord in, in your mind. 
which means think about the goodness of God in your mind. Think about what he does for you every day in your mind. And, and he says if you really start to think long enough about the goodness of God, all of a sudden it'll, it'll attach itself to your heart or your soul. And so he says, worship the Lord with all your mind, with all your heart or your soul. And then he says, with your mind, your soul, and your body. I, I've often asked myself the question, how is it that when you go to concerts, you get so excited, you jump up out of your seats and you run around and you start to crying and doing all kinds of, if you will, crazy things when some secular songwriter comes into the arena and sings. It is because she or he attaches your mind to what the words are. And after he or she attaches your mind to what she is singing about, then she attaches it to your heart or your soul. And then next thing you know, your body responds to what your mind is telling you and what your spirit is feeling. Sometimes you will never feel just what I just said this morning because you have not thought about the goodness and greatness of God. And it has not affected you in any way at all. All week he has been good to you. Your body just sits there because it has not got excited about the goodness of God. David said it this way, every time I think about the goodness of God, I think, then I feel it. He said it makes me want to dance, 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 dance. Y'all were looking at the choir and they were not only swaying, but a few of them was dancing and y'all were looking like, oh my, what is that all about? They were thinking about how great God is. And then they felt it. And then their body language expressed it. Some of them started smiling. I saw you. Some of them started laughing. Some of them started swaying from side to side. And then some was out there dancing. That's because they know who God is in their life. I'm going to do something very quick and very strange in, a, in this kind of prayer thing right now. I'm going to ask that you bow and talk to God in your own way. And I'm going to ask everybody between the ages of, let's say, 7 or 10 to 20 to 30. If you're between the ages of, say, 7 and 30, I want you to come up to the altar. If you're between the ages of 7 and 30, is there anybody in here under 30? That's a shame. Come on down. I'm not going to take you in. I'm asking you to come and pray because I'm going to just announce something over your life. Give God some praise for these who are coming. These are under 30. They deal with a different set of problems. If you're in the choir, choir, come on down if you're under 30. That's it. And you don't have to stand and hold hands. Just stand around there. That's it. You guys who are 30 and under, you're dealing with a set of problems that are different than older people. You're, you're, you're dealing with growing up. And growth can be sometimes challenging. And, and those of you who are trying to pay attention to what your parents is telling you, you, you get sick and tired of hearing them fussing at you. And, and some of you who are teenagers, you're, you're having, starting to have what is called hormonal problem, hormone problem. They make you get mean sometimes. They make you get irritable. Sometimes you think you are emotionally disturbed. You're not disturbed. It's just your hormones. Your hormones are just growing and moving. And then those of you who are out of school, going into college, you're trying to struggle with those issues. And I just wanted to pray with you. Would you bow your head with me and just tell Jesus how much you love him. You start right there and tell him, just say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Say it after me. Say, Jesus, I love you. Say, Jesus, I love you. Say, Jesus, I love you so much. And I thank you for loving me. Eternal God, our Father, I am praying for these who are 30 and under right now. What they're going through are normal and natural kinds of things for their lives. I'm believing that you would touch them who are in school and that you would get inside of their mind, their heart, and their spirit, and even 
each school, we know that evil is always present and the influence of the devil is there as well. But I'm claiming the victory upon each of these young people's lives right now that they will not submit themselves to the devil or Satan, but rather they will submit themselves to you. God, when they wake up in the morning, remind them that you're going to walk with them and talk with them and be with them. And as they're developing relationships, we pray for their right relationship. As they're developing their minds, we're praying for their young minds, God. Above all, keep their minds stayed on Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said amen. Give God a great big hand praise for these who have come. You may go back to your seat as you remain standing for just a moment. All of you, if you just keep praying for a moment, keep the prayer lights on. Those of you who are between ages of 30 and 60, I want you to come up. Between ages of 30 and 60, if you're in the choir, come on down. 30 and 60, if you're between 30 and 60, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 30 and 60, that's it. Come on down, come on down, come on down. I just want to pray for you. I owe you all the praise. These are the folk between 30 and 60. Now, they got a, they got a different set of problems. If you're between 30 and 60, you're probably struggling with family, job, working. You're probably struggling with marriage and relationships. You're starting to feel a few aches and pains right now. Trying to make yourself a little money before you get into retirement age. You worried about whether or not the world is going to pass you by. You worried about relationship, marriage. Some of you saying, I ain't worried about relationship. I got to struggle with singleness. <laughs> Do you not know that 70% of the children in black families my Lord, my Lord. are now raised in single homes? Jesus. And I need to tell you, if that's the family structure, that's the family structure. And you don't have to apologize for to anybody about you raising your kids all by yourself. Have I got a witness in the house? Truth of the matter is, you didn't choose to do that. It was chosen for you by some choices. So I'm going to believe God for you. Would you bow your heads and just whisper a word of prayer for all of those of you? Whatever you're going through, you're moving beyond 40. You're moving into 50. Most of you are around 50 years of age. That's the medium age in our world today for people. God, right now, lift your hands up right now. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for these who are 30 to 60, God. I'm praying that you will give them the peace that pass all understanding, God, as they struggle with things and issues in their life, struggling to continue working, struggling to continue raising their family, struggling to decide on really what kind of occupation and career they're going to have, struggling with relationships, God, struggling in marriage, struggling with single parenting, struggling, trying to make it so that they can continue moving. And even now, God, as issues of health comes into their uh, atmosphere, I'm praying against them. I'm praying that you will give them the right kind of mind that will keep them healthy in the name of Jesus, God. I'm believing it right now. I'm believing that you'll give them wisdom to wake up and to thank you every day and to start eating right and exercising and keeping their mind healthy and peaceful. And I'm believing that you will give them that rest that you promised in Matthew 11, 28. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying and all the people of God said amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Amen. Just wave at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, we gonna be all right as you go back to your seats. Now here's the last group I want to come up. Those of you who are 60 to 90, I want you to come up. 60 to 90. Come on, y'all. Some of these are our builders. They fought in the war for us. They built colleges and universities for us. They established what it meant to be black, and I'm proud. These are the people between the ages of 60 and 90. And you're struggling with another set of issues. Y'all just want to make it and wake up in the morning. But listen to me. You are in the best time of your life. 
you ain't got to raise no more children. If the marriage ain't settled, it ain't settled, but we're going to stay together anyhow. You got your retirement plan, and you're trying to get some extra money for it. And you want to stay healthy. Amen, somebody? Give God some praise for that. So, so you're between 60 and 90 years old, and your mind is sharp as sharp can be. Why? Because you don't have the problem of those between 30 and 60. You ain't worried about working. You ain't going to work no more. You ain't got to worry about raising, taking kids to school and all of that, maybe grandkids. You ain't got to worry about money. See, we can, we can pay this church off just with your money. Hello, somebody. Y'all been tight now. Y'all got to loosen up on them dollars. But y'all got it made. You get to do something that nobody else in those other ages get to do. You can do whatever you want to do. You can read whatever books you want to read, except for those bad books. You can think sharply because you have experienced life. You're settled now. You don't have to worry about health if you're eating right, but you cannot get high off the hog. You get low off the hog. In other words, you die eating all that pig. Bacon in the morning, eggs in the morning, all the time. You got to eat right. Say, I got to eat right. Say, I got to sleep right. Say, I got to wake up right. Now watch this. Say, my system got to be right in the mornings. All right, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's true. But we are dependent upon y'all to live a long life. And you can live to be 90, at least. Bow your heads. Thank God very quickly. Just tell God you're thanking him right now. Tell him you're thanking him. Lift him hands up in the air as your way of surrendering. When a policeman comes, he said, hold your hands up. It means surrender to my authority. Tell God, say, God, I love you so much. Say, Jesus, keep a fence all around me. Keep me healthy, wealthy, and wise. Say, Jesus, wherever you want to use me, at the age I am today, I am willing to submit to your will. Say, God, I'm not perfect, but you are trying to perfect me every day. So God, when I think it's all over, remind me that it ain't over until you say it's over. So God, extend to me extended life, but not only in time and quantity, but also in the quality of life. Say God, I know I don't take as risk like I used to, but help me, God, to risk driving where I want to drive, going where I want to go, flying where I want to fly, eating where I want to eat, and enjoying life. In Jesus' name, give me longevity. Give God a great big hand praise to these who are... 60 to 90, just wave to your friends around you at 60 and 90. Just wave to them. Those are your brothers and sisters that you want to see around. Now, I got one last listing, and I don't think I'm going to get anybody here. Huh? Now, I need those who are 90 and over. Is there anybody in the house 90 and over? Stand where you are. If, if nobody 90 and over, where's the 90 and over? Come up if you can walk. If you can walk, because I want you to at least get to be 120. Come on down. Come on down, my brother. Come on down, my sisters. These are our future centurions. They're going to be 100 year old at least, because I'm going to pray, and y'all going to pray for these. You need to be standing on your feet. These are, this is our 90 and over. 90 and over. 90. Now, y'all know we got more than just one, right? 
Amen. Brother Young is 90 and over. I can name several of them, but they were smart enough to know that when it gets snowy like this here, you got to be in the shape of this brother here only to get, in, get inside the church without falling. Give me that name. 91. 91. What's your, give him a great big hand. What's your name? July the 9th, 1932. Raymond. Raymond. Give Raymond a great big hand praise. Hey, has anybody got a, anybody got $91 they can give me? I ain't bring no money. I don't use cash. Ain't somebody got $91? Anybody got $5? Somebody come up here and throw me $5 and $10 up here. I want $91 up here because I'm giving it to Raymond today. Come on. I, I know some of y'all carry cash. Don't put no, I, that's 20. That's 20. That's 40. That's 60. That's 65. Okay, I need another uh, 10, $5. I need at least $1. There you go. 20, 20, 20, 20. Oh, oh, throw it down there. Throw it down there. Throw it down there. Oh, oh don't bring your tithe now. Come on, bring it down here. 91. $91. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here comes a young one bringing in. There you go. Now, Raymond, uh, can you pick this money up or you want us to pick it up for you? I hope. Can you, can you pick this money up? Uh, he said pick the money up for him right there. Come on, Deacons. The three of y'all come right here. Amen. We can't let no young person pick it up because they'll take it home. <laughs> now, Raymond, you came to church today. You always come to church. Is that your wife you're with that you come? Or your... She didn't make it today. Tell her she missed out. Yeah, tell her. Huh? That's his daughter. Yeah, I, won't, I won't tell her that you made some money today. Okay? Whatever you do, watch your pocket. Watch your wallet. Watch your dresser. Uh, and watch your daughter. <laughs> he did all right today, didn't he? Y'all tell y'all tell the 91 year olds, y'all should have made it today. Y'all could have split this money up. We want to give this to you, well, uh, Raymond, because we're grateful to God for you. Bow your heads and whisper a word for Raymond. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for Raymond. For 91 years, he walked up like he was 60 years old. And we're grateful for you preserving his mind, his heart, his spirit, and even his coming to church on Sunday morning. We pray, oh God, that you will bless his health, God, that you will bless his health care workers, that you will bless his going in and coming out. You will bless his mind, God. Remind him that Abraham lived to be 120 years of age. And by the grace of God, he too can live to be 120 if it is your will. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Hold your hand out there and give him this money. Amen. Give him that money. Now, Raymond, Raymond, whenever somebody does something good for you, like raise money for you, you're supposed to give them 10% of it. Come on, give Raymond a great big hand praise. Y'all sit down quiet. Thank you very much. Come on, let's look at our announcements and our kids are getting ready to go. Give God one more great big hand praise in the house. We pray for everybody in the house. Y'all ought to feel good today. Okay. Amen. At this time, kids K through 6 can exit to the right of the stage. And all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. It's a new season, it's a new day. Many people have asked how you should start off the new year. First, in prayer. We are asking everyone to go into 30 days of prayer and fasting. We have a 30 day prayer guide at our connect desk to help you on this journey. Secondly, start with generosity. Every start of the new year, you must always remember that before you can be blessed, you must be a blessing. Before you can receive, you must give. In recognition of this biblical mandate, we as a church would like you to give toward one of our mission projects. In particular, we are giving blankets of blessings 
and cards of encouragement to our local nursing homes. Participate with us by bringing in a blanket and card of encouragement for our seniors in the community. Thirdly, get engaged. Join our Sunday morning men and women's Bible study between services, servant leader training on February 4th between services, church baptism on January 28th, and Super Bowl Sunday on February 11th. This is a fun Sunday where we encourage you to wear your sports and favorite team apparel. We are proud of the vision of this church. While the journey of our church and our mission has begun many years ago, we are forging ahead to a glorious future and we wanna share with you our three-year statement of ministry. We sent out a special email and text to everyone on our contact list, this special ministry book so everyone can see all that we do as a church for the kingdom of God. It also is our guide to show our impact as a church. We encourage you to look through it and share the message with others of all the great ways we strive to help people, save souls through evangelism, strive to strengthen our community, and how we are a healthy investment for you. So I guess I was uh, divorced 11 years ago. And of course I had, I owned a home with my ex-husband. And um, then after the divorce, I went through some challenges, some really, really serious challenges um, financially. And um, then it became, um, I became a single parent and I've always wanted to own a home by myself. I just, just did. And I would always just, you know, drop that in my prayers. Like, God, you know, if it's your, if it's your will, make a way. I continued to tithe. <laughs> when I tell you that that right there, I can just stop right there because tithing works. I mean, I cannot testify enough about how tithing works. I just continued to be faithful, continued to tithe, and he just made a way. And I just knew in the back of my mind, okay, I wanted to be a homeowner. I, I rented for a while, a couple of years with my son, and you know, it just, it just didn't feel right. I just always wanted to own a home of my own. So God blessed me during the pandemic when we were building for Kingdom Fellowship, I was praying and believing that God was gonna allow me to be a homeowner by myself. And I just continued again to be faithful and tied and he just made a way no matter what I needed. He helped me build the savings and he helped, you know, he repaired my credit tremendously and just, I just kept tied and just believing. And no matter, every t at every turn, he just provided every single time and during the pandemic i was able to purchase my own home in my own name um in in an area that i absolutely adore so <laughs> he provided i mean and and then some i mean it just i don't know how i was able to qualify um, for the home that I had other than God. I don't know how I was able to get the down payment other than God. I'm a school teacher and I'm a single parent and I did not I did not have a large savings, but God just kept building and building and and when I needed this amount of money and I mean he just it, he just provided and I just continued to be faithful and God blessed me with a home which I adore. So um, that's my testimony. I mean, God does provide and I, I've never stopped tithing, never. I will never stop tithing because he, he will always make a way. And I tell everybody who, you know, struggles, oh, I'm a single parent, I can't do it. I mean, I'm a school teacher on a single parent salary, I mean, at, at the time, and it just, I don't know, he just made a way. So if you think you can't do it, you're wrong because <laughs> with God, all things are possible. They just are. So I don't know, that's my testimony and I'm loving my home and it's, you know, it's mine <laughs> and it's, it's possible. <laughs> Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for that testimony. Amen. Let's stand on our feet and turn our Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Let's prepare for the reading of God's word. Malachi 3, 6 through 12. This is our giving time. This is our time to give back to God and to thank God for all that he's doing and all that he's going to do in our lives. Let's read this responsibly. The Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say?
Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God, thanking God for blessing us even on today. The great thing that happens when you give to God is that God promises you rewards. You know, the Bible says that God will do some things. He'll promise good things to happen to your life. The Bible also talks about how he promises your children will be blessed. God promises to bless your work and your business. Also, God promises that you'll live a happier life. It says you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Heavenly Father, we give today not grudgingly, but we give today cheerfully, knowing and believing that you love a cheerful giver. I yes. pray right now yes. that you would bless the giver. We thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to bless your house and to bless your ministry. We believe today that when we bless your house, that you'll bless our house. We pray, God, that you would bless your people right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are given a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets, even online and in your cars if you're there today. We thank you for giving at this time. of God, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Give God a great big hand praise as you remain standing for just a moment, asking God to speak to us and through us in his holy word. Pray for the man of God, your pastor, your preacher. And we want to thank God for our pastor and our preacher, Pastor Senior Larry Macon Jr. for the marvelous work that he shared with us, with that marvelous sermon he shared this morning with the congregation. Give him a great big hand. Marvelous, marvelous message. Now whisper a word of prayer real quick for the pastor and then we can go on home and call it a day. Come on, come on. We want the presence of God to come into our, our midst. He's, he's already been in here. We want him to stay in here now. So often we do all the singing and everything else and then when it comes down to preach word, we say that we don't want to even hear anything that the preacher has to say, we've heard it, we sang it, so we don't want it.
But the Bible says that uh, you are empowered through the word of God. And so if there's not a word from God, there will be no empowerment to you. Pray. Yes, I felt somebody praying right then. I felt the presence of God. I felt somebody speaking to God. You want God to speak to other folk today. You want God to move into this place and into the heart, minds, and spirits of us. That we might become not milk drinkers, but meat eaters in the word. God, we have praised you. We have worshiped you. And even now, God, we ask that you will come now and speak to us, your Holy Spirit these folk will see the Jesus in me and there is also the Jesus in them God if ever there's a ne ne ever time in our world in our life we need it Jesus this world needs you now this country needs you now the family needs you now the schools need you now we need you and I need you speak now Lord in Jesus' name we pray for his sake. And all the people of God said, amen. Give God another great big hand praise as you go to your seat. Turning your book, turning your Bible to the book of Luke. Amen. How many of you still carry your Bible? Say amen. amen. Boy, that's terrible. How many of y'all carry your Bible to church? Say amen. amen. How many of y'all carry a Bible? Say amen. Amen. Praise God for you. I'm just so glad to see you. If we have any visitors in the house, just lift your hand up if you're a visitor today. We're not going to call you out. We're not going to call you out. No, we're not going to. Okay, I see y'all not going to raise your hand because y'all think I'm going to ask you to stand and say something. But we're glad to see you anyway. Amen. And we're glad to see the, all you who are looking at us online. There is a passage of scripture in the book of Luke, the 15th chapter. It is a prominent it is a chapter that if you have not read the book of Luke in chapter 15, you really are missing a great part of the Bible. Say you're missing a great part of the Bible. Because Jesus is going to say something three times. The same thing three times. Say three times. Now I need to help you understand that when you are trying to read the Bible and trying to understand what the word of God is trying to teach you or tell you, whenever there is a repetition of anything, wherever there is a repetition, say repetition, of anything in the Bible, especially when it comes down to one chapter or a particular chapter in the Bible, you have to stop and listen to the repetition. Whenever Jesus says to someone in the Bible, verily, verily, you need to stop right there Take your time and try to understand what he is getting ready to say. And generally, it's also accommodated with the word amen, amen. And so whenever the Bible says, Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, then you need to stop and listen closely. Say, listen closely. And whenever he says, I say unto you, I say unto you, I say unto you, stop, take your time, listen. In the... 15th chapter, I got excited about something that he constantly was saying. It was a phrase. It was three phrases that he's, he's going to say. In chapter 15, say chapter 15, the Gospel of Luke, he's going to tell three stories. The three stories are going to be about lostness. Something gets lost, but something gets found. Now turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're in that text. Because you know that there's been times you've been lost. But there's also times that you've been found. And so he's going to say in three stories that something is lost and something is found. The first thing that's going to be lost is sheep. Say sheep. There's going to be a hundred of them hurting, and one of them hurting, and one of them, not hurting, but they are hurting, hurting, and one of them is going to be lost and going to be found. There's going to be a coin that's going to be lost, a precious coin going to be lost, and it's going to be what? Found. And then there's going to be a person who's going to be lost, but is going to be found. And what you need to focus in on in these stories of lostness and being found is the, 
phrase or the word celebrate. Say celebrate. celebrate. Say celebrate. celebrate. Say whenever something is found, it's time to party. Now, I know that you don't know anything about partying. I know, I know you're a saint and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, been baptized. You haven't been to a party lately. Mm -hmm. But it's time, say it's time to celebrate. Here is what he says in verse 6, in, in verse six, and I'm reading out of the modern interpretation. He just says in verse 6 these words, come and celebrate with me. Say come and celebrate with me because something is found. That's the sheep. Now in verse 10 he says, come, say come and celebrate. In verse 9, the coin is found. And in verse 32, chapter 15 of the gospel according to Luke, the physician, he says, he says, he says, he says, uh, but, uh, but, but the father replied, my dear son, you have been with me all the time and everything I have is yours. But we, we, Here's a qualifying word. We had to celebrate. We say we had to celebrate. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, there are times you just have to celebrate. Say, say neighbor, I know that you haven't done it lately, but keep on living. There's going to come a time that you just had. I wish I had some folk in here, here today who just had, who just have to celebrate that, 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 uh, that you got something to celebrate about. Now, it might be your secret between you and God, and you don't need to tell me all of your business, because I don't want to get up in your business up in here, up in here. But you know that there are some things that have happened in your life that you just had to celebrate. And so the father says to the older son, but we had to celebrate and show our joy. For this your brother, I thought he was dead and he is alive. I thought he was lost. And he is found. Say, neighbor, come and celebrate with me. If any of you have ever been to a wedding reception, most of you know that a wedding reception is a form of celebration. I've had weddings time and time again inside of the church and discovered that on some of these weddings, nobody hardly showed up. But when I went over to the reception, everybody was shouting, party over here, and party over there. If you ever been to a birthday party, Brother Lori Knuckles had one the other week, you know that at a birthday party, there's always celebration. And if you're ever downtown at one of the Cavaliers game, I would say the Browns game, but it, after looking at that last, I don't know what it was. Uh, you made it, but not far enough. If you go to the Cavaliers game, you know that in the beginning, I, I love going down to the arena downtown because out of nowhere, they have this kind of fire that shoots up as if it's getting ready to explode the whole arena. And they have all kinds of singing and all of a sudden, people get up out of their seat and they start to move in, in certain kinds of way, ways and they're having a celebration, say celebration. So probably you have heard this term, celebration, and some of you probably even heard the song, celebration by a group of youngster back then called Cool and the Gang. 
Now for the young G's, the young gangster, or the Gen X, or those who we call the silent generation, the older folk, this song was released in 1980 and it was, and it reached number one on the recording charts. It was, it has since become a universal anthem for festivity. And everywhere you go, whether it's a wedding reception, whether it's a birthday party, whether it's a game, whether it's a sports event, they generally play this song, Celebration. And this song has been inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. It's now part of the National Registry. And for those of you who are so religious and think we ought not to be lifting up this kind of song in church, ought to know the backstory of this particular song. It was written by uh, a saxophonist and musical arranger of the group named Ronald Bell, say Ronald Bell. Ronald Bell wrote this song and he wrote this song while reading the Holy Bible. Somebody ought to say amen. And, and so Ronald said he was reading the creation story of Adam and Eve when God made Adam. He, he began to read that story in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere in his imagination, he saw an angel who was singing and praising God, and this angel was singing and praising God, whether he uh, was in a kind of trance or not, we do not know, but the angel was singing and yelling as man was being created, celebrate with me, come on. And, and this inspired him to write the basic lyrics and chords. I keep saying to people that all music is not all the devil's music. Have I got a witness? It, it, it's a universal kind of language that sound speaks to everybody. But I say to you, don't only watch how the musical sounds and chords and tunes are, but every now and then you've got to watch the lyrics. I wish I had a witness in the house. The, the chords may be universal, but the lyrics may be, in fact, demonic. But in the case of this particular song, Come, celebrate, celebration. Uh, it's, not, it's not demonic lyric. Here's what he says. He says, there's a party going on right here. Okay, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that, 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 you shouldn't say party inside the church. And certainly you shouldn't talk about the celebration inside the church because these folk ain't ready for no celebration or a party. There's a party going on right here, a celebration to last throughout the years. So bring your good times and your laughter too. We're going to celebrate your party with you. Come on now. Celebrate, have a good time. Now, I don't know about you, but if there's any place in the world that people ought to be talking about having a good time and celebrating and partying, it ought to be in the church. Can I preach it anyhow? God's been good to us. God has brought us from a mighty long ways. God has been bread when we were hungry and has been clothing when we didn't have any clothing on our back. God has been shelter in a stormy black. And if there's any place that we ought to be celebrating one more cold day, it ought to be inside of the church. Have I got a witness in the house? We ought not to be so tight-lipped and tight-sitting and sitting there as if we know God ain't doing nothing. I need to tell you, if it's snow, we ought to thank God for bringing the snow. If it's sunshine, we ought to thank God for raising up the sun. If the moon is shining, we ought to thank him for the moon. If the grass is growing, we ought to thank him for the grass. If the trees are out there still living, we ought to thank him for the tree. If Lake Erie still has some water we can reap, uh, drink from, we ought to thank God because the Bible says every good and perfect gift come from the Lord. And if you don't celebrate him now, he's got a way of taking the goodness away from you. Have I got a witness in the house? Can you stand for just 
two seconds and start to give him some celebration? Can you thank him for what he has done for you and for me? Celebrate with me. We're going to have a good time all year. Okay, y'all working me too hard. Sit down. So, so, so Jesus talks about celebration. Jesus talks about partying. Jesus says, cool in the gang didn't invent this thing. Y'all get that later. And, and Jesus was a master storyteller who knew his audience well, as well as the condition of each of his audience heart. He knew his audience, but he also knew them, not only as a group, but also as an individual. And when he presented what we call the parable of the prodigal son, the tax collectors and the sinners who are in the crowd drew near to him in order to hear what he had to say. But there were some, also some scribes and Pharisees in the audience who came there not to hear what he had to say, but rather grumble and have critical hearts about what Jesus is about to teach everybody. So what does Jesus do? He masterfully crafted a story that addressed exactly what both the sinners and the religious leaders needed to hear. And so in the 15th chapter of Luke, he, 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 he tells three separate stories. Yes, it's, it's, it's a story about a man with 100 sheep who had lost one, a woman who had lost coins on a dirt floor, and a father who had lost his, his youngest son. And in each of the cases, when the sheep, the coin, and the son are found, the Bible says there was rejoicing. Say rejoicing. There was praise going on, and they were starting to party. And a party was given in the third story to his son, and they had a party. The Bible says in Psalms 89, 15, repeat after me, Blessed is the people that know the joy sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of his continents. Say, blessed is the people that know, watch this, the password to God. That's what mess, the message Bible say, Eugene Peterson said. He says, blessed are the folk who walk in the church and know the password to God. And the password to God has many words. Sometimes it's praise God. That's the password. Other times, it's thank you, Jesus. Other times, it's hallelujah. So when you want to get in tune with the party, you ought to walk in talking about praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. God woke me up. Look at me. I'm thankful to God for waking me up one more day. I'm thankful to God. I got a smile on my face. I'm thankful to God. I didn't wake up with no aches in my body this day. I'm thankful to God. I didn't go to the hospital last week. I'm thankful to God. My doctor didn't give me a prognosis that was bad. I'm thankful to God. I got hair on my head and ain't looking like Brother James over there. Look out, James. The password to God. The text says, so Jesus, so the pet. The text says in verse 24 that the, that the father gives a, fa gives a party for his son, and they began to celebrate. Now, let me tell you about the three stories real quick. Though we are all familiar with the three stories, the prodigal son, the coin, uh, and the sheep, uh, sometimes we all play the part of being lost. Sometimes we are the wayward son. Other times we are the lost sheep. There are times where even the lost coin. But then sometimes we play uh, the part of a loving parent. And other times, as in the case of the older son, we play the part of a resentful and rebellious son. And so what God does is through the text, through Jesus, he invites them to understand that it's not just the older son and the younger son that are prodigal, but rather it's also the father. Because he's going to do things that no Jewish father would ever do. Certainly a Jewish father who was kingly would never run 
after or towards anybody. He always walked. Did some things here that I'll get to later on. And, 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 and so let me, let, me, let, me, let me give you three truths and then we'll just go home, okay? Say he, say, say he got a lot more to say. I, I, I struggle on Sunday mornings not with what I say but what I ain't saying. <laughs> three truths I want to tell you. Number one, we ought to know how to praise God. And we ought not to ever be afraid and ashamed to praise God. That when we come to church, we ought not to ever be worried about what somebody else is thinking about our praise. Have I got a witness? We often say, don't criticize my praise if you don't know what my problem is. But we ought not, I'm gonna preach this thing anyway. We ought not to be afraid to praise God. Some folk walk into churches if they think that praising God is going to take something away from you. It's not going to take anything away from you. It's not going to take your smartness. You'll be the same smart person you came in as you walk, walked out. It's not going to take away from your intelligence. Now, it might take away some of your money. But let me tell you something. You ought not to ever be afraid to praise the Lord and to express What's on the inside coming out on the outside? It, 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 you ought not be ashamed to lift your hand every now and then and say, hallelujah. You ought not be afraid to walk around the church, close your eyes, and just get into the presence of God. You, you ought not to be worried about what somebody else is thinking next to you. In, in fact, if it's bothering you, I always say to people who are bothered by folk, who are bothered by people who are sitting next to them on Sunday morning, and you know you're being bothered by the way they're acting. In fact, they're smothering your praise. You came in there to praise the Lord, and they got their feet and legs all crossed, and they got their arms all crossed looking like God ain't done nothing for them. They are just, they're stamining, they're, they're messing with your praise. And whenever you got somebody next to you who are messing with your praise, not knowing that you've got to deal with some things next week, you ought to just throw your hand up, get up and walk on to the other side of the church. But before you do it, stop and look wherever there are what I call praise spots, praise groups where things are hot. You ought to move next to somebody who knows how to let Go and let God have I got a witness in the house. But, but, I, but, but I didn't mean to say all that. But the problem is, is what we call the Americanized church. Say the Americanized church. The Americanized church tells us that you ought not to get excited in church. The Americanized church, yes, say that it doesn't take all that. The Americanized church says you ought to be speaking from your mind and you ought to be reflecting and be reflected. You ought not to say anything during worship experience. You ought to look intelligent and act intelligent. And the choir has no business swaying like they're swaying. And nobody should be shouting like you've been shouting. Because after all, God is an intelligent God. Let me tell you, that might be the Americanized church, but I taught a course in at Cleveland State for 15 years entitled uh, The Religious Ethics of the Black Church or the Black Church in America. In the black church, and you don't have to be black people to appreciate the black church because the truth of the matter is a lot of white churches have stole from us our Holy Ghost dance, our hallelujah, I thank you, Jesus. Our expressions are moving our head from side to side. But you don't have to be black to do the black experience I need to tell you that and the black experience in the black church is able to do that because of something that they do during the week they don't wait until Sunday morning come to start lifting up the name of Jesus have I got a witness uh, it starts on Wednesday night when the choir starts to go into rehearsal but they're not really rehearsing on Wednesday night they be shouting. They be praising God. They be thanking God. Lori and uh, sometimes have to tell them, y'all hold back now. Don't, don't do the shout right yet. The shout ain't right there. Uh, they start on Wednesday night. Say Wednesday night. 
And, and in the old church, the mothers used to start on Friday uh, with their all white on, praising God, going down on their knees, asking God to come into the midst of the place. That's why the other week on a Friday, I told folk, now Saturday is coming. I need all y'all to go down on your knees and y'all start to praising God and asking God to do something inside of the church on Sunday morning. Y'all didn't know it, but that Sunday we had a, we had a great church service. Why? Because church didn't start Sunday morning. It started on Saturday night. You know, when I was worried about what I was going to wear, what I was going to eat as a kid on Sunday morning, mama didn't fix that dinner for us on Sunday morning. No, she started with them greens on Saturday evening. She started warming up those beans on Sunday evening. She started to put that cornbread all ready to go into the stove on Saturday night. Have I got a witness in the house? We're, we didn't wait till Sunday morning to have chicken and all. All that stuff was already ready. We didn't worry about what we were going to wear. Mama told us, listen, you go in that closet of yours and you find your church clothes on Saturday night. I don't want you to talk about why well, I couldn't find what to wear on Sunday morning. When your daddy comes home and he's ready to take you to church, you got to be ready. Have I got a witness? She put us all, 15 of us, in the same bathtub at one time and washed us up. I know I kind of exaggerated, but, but y'all understand what I'm saying. They got ready on Saturday night. You see, you can't have no fire in here talking about I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch on fire on Sunday morning. Uh, where the old folk used to say, if you come in here with wet wood, your wood won't get fired up. But if, if you get it dried on Monday, if you dry it a little bit on Tuesday, and dry it a little bit on Wednesday, and dry it a little bit on Thursday, and dry it a little bit on Friday, and dry it on Saturday. When you walk in, it won't take much to light your fire up. Have I got a witness in the house? Oh, you getting some fire in here now. now. Now, let me show you how, what happens. What happens? I'm going to get my technician to help me. Let me show you what happens uh, when you're not the Americanized church, but when you're the black church and you do just what I said. You, you, you start working all week long. Here is what goes on in the black church. Uh, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I can't see it. Fire. I don't think you got it on. What? Turn it up. 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 Now that's where it stops. Stand on your feet. That's enough.
your neighbor, say neighbor. Say, say neighbor. That don't make no sense. All right. Say neighbor. That don't make no sense. That don't make any sense. The truth of the matter is, I wish some days you leave your senses outside. I, I wish you would bring your faith in and have a culture of faith. You can break it down. They, they're not ready for this. They'll be ready next year. They got some work to do. To get to that point, you have to work all week. your memory to work. <laughs> it, it's about worshiping God. He says, come and celebrate with me. That's, that's the father saying to the older son, come and worship with me. Come and let's celebrate. The, the son that was lost is now found. And what Jesus was trying to establish that you can celebrate if you're in a relationship with the Father. So you have to be in a relationship with the Father. And then what you'll get is a culture of festival. Instead of a culture of facts. We, we want to we rationalize everything. We want to understand everything. And I'm saying this to you because we're at the beginning of year. And we don't know what's going to come down the pipe. And there's going to be some stuff that's going to be not explainable. And we're going to have to have a culture of festival, a culture of celebration. But as in the parable, very quickly, there's some who are going to be in, others going to be out. The prodigal son was out but came in. The older son was prodigal also. He was in, but he left out. But sometimes you can be both in and out. But God is saying, I need you to really just be in. As you bow your heads and a word of thanks unto God, we're ready to go home. I'm sorry for keeping you so long. But the spirit was moving in such a powerful way during this entire worship experience. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus, you need Jesus in your heart. And you need to accept him while you can right now. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus, totally holy would you lift up your hand there's someone in here you haven't accepted jesus in your heart at least publicly maybe you have privately if you're here today you've never been baptized of water would you lift up your hand is there anyone in here today if you're here today i'm going to ask you a real bold question i want you to just run up here if you want jesus in your heart or you want to return back to jesus yes it's about returning back to his church if you want Jesus in your heart, why don't you just come on down here? You don't have a church home. Why don't you come down here real quick? Just run down here if you're here today in the church. You don't have to be afraid. If you want to unite and connect with the Mount Zion Church, we ain't worried about no membership. We worry about you connecting with the church. If you're without a church, you can connect right now. I see where you are. That's fine. If you want to connect with the church, there's a card in your pew. You can fill out the card and you can connect with the church. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this marvelous experience, for reminding us who we are in you. Thank you, God, for empowering us and giving us your presence. Now, God, on next Sunday, I am praying for something to happen in this church that has never happened before. I'm praying that your Holy Spirit will fall upon people until some of them feel as if they're going to fall out. I want you to make this a place of freedom on next week. We're going to have choir members who are going to be praying all week long. Deacons and ministers are going to be praying all week long. Seniors are going to be praying in the name of Jesus that something will happen on next week. And we are expecting it to happen in Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's celebrate with God next week. Come on, choir. Take us home.